Max, if I were to travel your road with you and believe that mathematics is at the root of everything, the ground of being of reality, what would that mean? What, what are the ways of, of changing impressions that I would have to have about what reality is, what I am, what, what we all are? Since I think that not only some aspects of reality, but all aspects of reality are mathematical, that actually leads us to a very optimistic uh, vision for the future, because it means that not only some things, but all things in the world are potentially understandable by us, including our own consciousness. Okay, how can you justify that? How can you say mathematics has something to do with our consciousness? The two seem like radically different categories. Sounds like a category mistake. If I'm right, and I really am my particles, we get away from this old dualism that somehow the inner world and the outer world have nothing to do with each other and try to unify it, then it means that we physicists and neuroscientists also should be able to, by studying very carefully what these particles are doing, ultimately understand what is it that makes a difference between conscious matter and unconscious matter. I like to think that there are other kinds of matter also, that there's a broad class of matter that I like to think, call perceptronium, <laughs> which is self-aware, somehow because it's arranged in, not because it's made of some other kind of secret ingredients, but because the same old particles are arranged in a much more beautiful and complex and intricate pattern than in inanimate matter. So if we look at a very boring and inanimate piece of matter, like a rock or the sun, the patterns that the particles are arranged in are actually very simple. Whereas if we take a more complex pattern, here's one. <laughs> if we think of this as a time going up in this direction, there's a fourth dimension and then space, and we think of these different strands showing where different particles are at, at different points in time, and then we imagine that this is now not a handful, but maybe 10 to the power 26 <laughs> particles making this incredibly elaborate braid pattern in space-time. Uh, this pattern is actually, that we have in our heads, is actually the most complicated and beautiful pattern we've ever encountered anywhere in our universe. What the mathematical universe hypothesis implies then is that there's something special about the complexity of this pattern that makes it actually become aware of itself. Mm. And uh, I think this is a fascinating thing that uh, we should really study more and ultimately try to unify not only the internal perspective we subjectively have on reality with the outside view of me as just a bunch of particles, but also help unify physics with neuroscience. I love the recent work by Giulio Tononi and Christoph Koch, who have these very concrete ideas for what it is about a shape in space-time that makes it conscious. Mm. Because suddenly, this isn't just words and speculations, but there are formulas, there's information theory, the kind of stuff that we physicists can get to mm. work on and make calculations with. And I hope that one day we'll be at the point where you can show me any kind of matter. And by just looking at the patterns within it that the particles make up, I can f figure out whether it's conscious or not. We have these two big elements. We have the cosmos, everything that's in it, and we have consciousness. Now, there are people, most neuroscientists, who believe that only the cosmos is real, the physical, material stuff, and that out of that comes consciousness. Somehow it's a, an accidental byproduct or a product of evolution, however, however you want to think about it. Uh, the, the mind comes out of the brain. Others, maybe many in Eastern traditions, believe that the only reality is consciousness that that is the only rally and, and that somehow consciousness manifests the physical reality. You're saying something totally different, I think. You're saying that beneath both of them are mathematical structures which give rise to both, which gives them both a unity, but neither one is the ultimate cause. I think that the, most of the great breakthroughs in physics have involved unifications tearing down artificial boundaries between things. We used to think that electricity and magnetism were two separate things until Maxwell unified them into electromagnetism. We used to think that energy and mass were two separate things until mm -hmm. Einstein told us that that's just the same. 
then Einstein unified space to time, mm -hmm. then he unified acceleration with <laughs> gravitation. And what I'm saying now is I think that if we view everything as mathematical, then it very naturally also unifies the two parts of the traditional dualism of the mind. It says that there are two ways of looking at this, either as a bunch of quarks and electrons moving in a very complicated way from the outside, or from the inside in terms of the way we perceive things, but it's just two different ways of looking at exactly the same thing. Just as Einstein showed that by you know, doing some mathematical transformation, you, you can either say it's gravity or it's acceleration. Which is right? They're both right. And we can just choose whichever way of talking about it is more useful at the moment. And what you're doing is using mathematics to, to uh, equate and to make the same, the cosmos, everything that we find in it, and consciousness. That's a pretty big claim. It's a pretty big claim, but I think uh, that makes it all the more exciting if it's true. And I, I find it fascinating how I have for so many years now been trying to understand how, based on what principles, can we look at an area like this full of quarks and understand why it appears to us as grouped into objects mm -hmm. in a dynamic world. And then Giulio Tononi has been looking at how can you look at a bunch of firing neurons and understand why that appears the way it does and how ultimately these two uh, questions are almost the same question and uh, in both cases it boils down to just looking at shapes in uh, four-dimensional space-time or in some even higher abstract space and um, so that at the fundamental level all we have is, is beautifully complex and intricate mathematical shapes.